following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm on a brand new boat from Chaparral, the 21 H2O Sport Outboard. I'm going to do a full sea trial and a features inspection. Let's take a look. Now, the H2O series is part of Chaparral's affordable lineup, but there are a lot of features on this boat that you just don't normally see on an affordable boat. Let's take a look at some of them. The upgraded command link gauges with stainless steel bezels, four speaker stereo, a stainless steel package that includes the six inch logoed cleats, all stainless steel hardware. We've got speakers, stainless steel grab rails, and stainless steel drink holders. These molded in contour lines and a dual axle trailer. Let's take a look at the features beginning with the bow, where we have the usual bow configuration of two lounge seats to both port and starboard, but what is unusual is, notice we have the wraparound bolsters to both sides so we can sit right into the corners, plus we've got another wraparound bolster fully forward so we can have an aft facing seat. We've got the usual storage to both port and starboard. Notice the composite seating with drain holes, plus we've got water resistant foam. The storage goes 45 inches front to rear, however, the opening only goes 24 inches. I'd like to see that extended a little bit to take better advantage of the volume inside. I'm also impressed with the safety and the space. Now underneath the forward cushion, there's a step leading up to the foredeck so we can board from the bow. The hatch opens with a lift and lock latch and underneath there's an anchor locker with anchor keepers to both sides and to both sides of that, six inch cleats. And there's an optional filler cushion that will turn this entire area into a sun pad. Now as we get to the walkthrough, we not only have a lower air dam, but also we can close off the windshield and this allows us to boat on those chilly mornings. Also notice at the walkthrough, not only do we have storage under the port console, but also the helm console. A lot of manufacturers seem to forget this space. And here's a clever use of space right here, cargo net storage. When the walkthrough is opened up, the air dam lays flush against the helm console. A lot to be comfortable with on the port console. First, we've got a bucket seat that swivels and slides, and notice it's mounted on an elevated platform. That makes a nice step to put your foot on, plus we've got a drink holder just ahead. Over to the side, storage, supported by a padded bolster. I love the armrest, and there's a padded bolster to the outside of that. Moving just ahead, there's a stainless grab handle, drink holder, and a lockable glove box. I'd like to see this be a little bit deeper. Notice the brow just above. The room and versatility continue as we move back into the cockpit. Both the bucket seats swivel around to join the conversation with the four across bench seat all the way in the back. The safety continues with a 33 inch cockpit depth. In between the two bucket seats, there's a sole storage compartment that goes six feet forward. The opening measures 17 inches by 32 inches and notice the hatch is held open by a gas assist strut. I would like to see this latch, however, switched over to a stainless steel lift and lock latch. Storage continues under the bench seating to both sides and to the middle, a built-in insulated cooler. Now, because we have outboard power, the space that used to be occupied by the stern drive is now the largest storage area on the boat. We also have storage to both port and starboard. Now, with this covered, we also have some features up on top. First of all, a nearly full beam sun pad. We can lift one side up so it becomes a walkthrough to the transom. Additionally, this storage compartment, the hatch, can be used to support one end and now we have a chaise lounge and this can happen to either the port or starboard side. I would like to see, however, a separation between the piece that comes up and the seat back so that we can use this seat while this is in the upward position. Above the cockpit, we've got an optional sport tower that gives us an elevated tow point six feet eight inches above the deck nav light is up on top of it and notice that we have an integrated bimini above the powder coated tower. I also like that the tower is collapsible and it's counterweighted. We have a full length swim platform that comes out two feet two inches to both sides of the engine and notice the engine well still has walk space just ahead. A reboarding ladder is just under a concealed hatch to the starboard side. The helm has a bucket seat with a flip-up bolster. Notice that the back is opened up so that it has ventilation, plus the sides allow the captain to swing his legs around without having to swing the seat around. Taking a look at the helm itself, we have a vinyl brow over three separate gauge spaces. Two to the outside are Yamaha command link to give us selectable information. Stereo is in the center and just below, digital depth gauge. To the right, we've got a USB and MP3 input, drink holder right alongside, and an accessory plug just below with waterproof toggle switches. 
The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base, and I always love this classy feature that we see on Chaparral. The logo stays upright no matter which way you turn the wheel. Now, this helm seat comes as part of the optional deluxe package that includes the matching observer seat, the depth gauge, the bimini top for the tower, the port console storage door, and deluxe badging. Now, let's get around the water and see how she performs. The Chaparral 21H2O Outboard Sport has a length overall of 21 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 30 inches. With an empty weight of 2,800 pounds, 85% fuel, and two people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 3,424 pounds. She's rated for power ranging from 115 to 200 max horsepower. We tested with a single 150 horsepower Yamaha 4-stroke, turning an 18M 14 and a quarter Reliance prop that brought us to a top speed of 48.4 miles per hour at 6,000 RPM. Her best economic cruise was measured at 3,500 RPM and 24.4 miles per hour. It was at that speed that her 5 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 4.9 miles per gallon and a range of 175 statute miles while still holding back a 10% reserve of her total fuel capacity. She has Chaparral's extended V-plane hull that carries the running surface further past the hull. It brought us up on plane in 3 seconds with a minimal 8 degree bow rise before settling in on her 4 degree bow high cruise attitude. We accelerated through 20 miles per hour in 6 seconds and 30 in 7.7 .7 seconds. In turn testing, she tracked well and responded nicely to the helm. In power turns, she has just a slight slide that takes the edge off the turn and maintains a good comfort level. With the power turn held hard over, she showed no prop ventilation and more importantly, we had no chine walk or other adverse characteristics. Of course, we had flat comp test conditions, but crossing in the wake of our camera boat showed how well the 20 degree deep V hull transitions through chop with no pounding or hull slap. And on the way back to the dock, her 30 degree draft gave us a chance to go alligator hunting to no avail. Well, clearly we've got a great handling boat, comfortable features, and upscale treatments that you wouldn't find normally on an affordable boat. It's all wrapped up into one, the 21 H2O Sport Outboard from Chaparral. And that's my full look and sea trial for BoatTest.com. I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.